What's poppin' dogs? Mr. Allen here with some quadratic equations. But we're not asked to solve these four quadratic equations. We're asked to use the discriminant to determine the number of real or imaginary solutions that we have. Now, you could go through the trouble of solving this whole thing, but why do extra work, okay? Now, first off, what, what in the heck is the discriminant? Well, the discriminant, okay, is that part of the quadratic formula, the part that's inside of the square root. It's the b squared minus 4 a c part okay now if we can get that value it can tell us if we have two reals two imaginaries or one real okay or you could also say no real solutions if it's two imaginaries and uh let's think about what would cause that right this part is in the square root in that formula yes so if i have positive values for it i would be adding or subtracting positive numbers because of the plus or minus thing right which would give me two real solutions now, if that discriminant right there were negative, I'd be square rooting a negative number, which would cause no real solutions or imaginary solutions. I'd have two of them, the plus and the minus. And then what if that discriminant was zero? Well, what's the square root of zero? That's zero. So if I'm adding zero and I'm subtracting zero, am I going to get two unique solutions? No, I'd only get one. Okay? So those are the rules when it comes to the discriminant. Okay? And perhaps I'll write that down. I know this is going to be kind of like on my shirt here, I apologize. But if b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero, we get uh, two reals. And then if b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero, we get one real. And then if we have b squared, come over here so we can see a little better, b squared minus 4ac uh, is less than zero, aka negative, then we have two imaginary. Or you could say like no real solutions, right? It depends on what level of math you're in right now. If you know about imaginary solutions or not, or imaginary numbers or not, you may or may, ask, may, or may not be asked to say two imaginary or no real solutions, okay? So one of those two would be acceptable depending on what level of mathematics you're in. All right, so let's get after this thing, okay? Let's see here. Hmm. All right. So what are my A, B, and C? Well, this is my A, that's my B, and that's my C. The coefficients, okay? Not the X squared and the X, it's just the numbers. So B squared, that's going to be 5. So B, so 5 squared minus 4 times, let's see here, A is 3, C is 1. So we've got 25, and then we have 4 times 3 times 1, that's 12, so minus 12, this is going to be 13, that is greater than 0, thus we have two real solutions. Cool, alright? So I don't have to go through the whole trouble of like the quadratic formula or trying to like factor and solve or anything like that, because it's just asking me, how many solutions do I have? Are they real? Are they imaginary? Just asking that little bit of information there, okay? They could even on a test, like say, the discriminant is 13. How many solutions does this have and what kind? You would say two reals because it's positive greater than zero, right? Next one here. Um, let's go with, uh, let's see here. We got our A is two, our B is negative five, and our C is 10. So we've got negative five squared. That's gonna be positive 25, right? Make sure you put that in parentheses there, especially if you're plugging it in your calculator. If you don't use parentheses exactly how I have it, you're gonna get the wrong answer. Don't put the two, the exponent two, in there with the five and have the parentheses after. It's gonna screw it up, okay? It has to be exactly how I have it here in your calculator if you're typing it in, okay? And then we have minus four times A, which is two, times C, which is 10. And now let's just evaluate this. So I've got uh, 25. Uh, we have Four times two is eight times 10 is 80. So minus 80, well, that's gonna be a negative number. Like I could stop here and just be like, two imaginary, right? Um, if they actually ask you for the discriminant, then you need to continue. So we'll do that. That's what, negative 55? Cool. So that is less than zero. Thus, we have two imaginary. Okay, solutions. Or you could say, or no real solutions. Again, it just depends on what kind of math you're in right now. If you're in Algebra 1, you may not have talked about imaginary numbers yet. 
uh, you may have. Just depends. Um, so again, either one of those would, would be acceptable depending where you're at. Just make sure you, uh, you know, check with your teacher, right? Check with your teach. I ain't your teach. Well, maybe I am. I don't know. But a lot of you might be watching these that I'm not your teacher. You might not even know me. Hi, I'm Mr. Allen. How's it going? I'm a real dude. All righty. Next up, I have uh, 2x squared minus 7. What in the heck? Why? I'm missing something, right? I only have the A and I only have the C. So how does that look like an E? How is this going to work, right? How is, how is this all going to happen? I'm just trying to fix this terrible C. All right, well, let's just, I don't know, I guess B is what, 0? Yeah, if it's not there, it's 0, right? So I'll write that 0 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 7. Well, this is 0. Negative and negative is going to be positive. 4 times 2 is 8, times 7 is 56. So we get 56, which is greater than 0. So we have two real solutions. Nice. I nearly panicked at first there, guys. I nearly panicked. I nearly lost it. I was like, oh, my God. What is going to happen? Um, but we were okay, right? B was 0. Next one. We got uh, 7x squared. So this is my A. The 7 is my A. Plus 6x, so B is the 6, plus 3, so C is 3. Let's plug it all in. B squared is 6 squared minus 4 times A times C. Okay, so we got 36 there. This is, this is going to be a close one. Okay, um, we got 4 times 7 is 28 times 3, or do I want to do, I kind of would rather do this. 7 times 3 is 21, so I'm doing this in my head. This makes a little more sense. 21 times 4, that's going to give me negative 84 then. So I'm thinking 20 times 4 is 80. 1 times 4 is 4. Add those together, you get negative 84. Otherwise, uh, negative 28, I'm like, uh, it's, it seems harder to me. I don't know. So sometimes I just group them however it makes sense in my brain. Or, or just grab your calculator, right? I could have typed it all in. So now we have 36 minus 84. Now I'm scared. I don't want to screw this up. Is that negative 48? I think that's right. Let's double check. It's because I got it right here, right? It's just I should just double check it, right? 36 minus 84. Psh, negative 48. I didn't need to check it. I was good. 100% confidence all the time, right? No. Anyways. All righty. So negative 48. What does that mean? Well, it is less than zero. It's a negative number. So we get uh, two imaginary um, or no real solutions cool there we go guys i guess the only scenario we didn't really have here was uh was only one real solution right but if my discriminant ended up being zero then i know that it's one real okay so just look out for that we only had the two reals and two imaginary situations here but that's all right you know it'll happen at some point you'll get one real then bibbity boppity we're good to go let me see if i can think of one in my head real quick okay one real quick and i've got a little space right here okay got a little space we're going to do a situation where there's one real okay let's see here um let's go with 9x squared plus 6x plus 1 equals 0 okay there we go tiny little guy right there so now when i plug this in with my discriminant right B squared is 36, sorry, 6 squared, uh, minus 4, times A, which is 9, times C, which is 1. I'm going to get 36 minus 4 times 9 times 1, that's 36, which equals 0. So we have one real, whoops, I can't combine E, A, real, solution. Boom. There we go. Got it. All right. It was close, guys. We almost didn't have every situation here, but now we have every situation. All right, we got zero for our discriminant, thus it's one real solution. It's beautiful. It's fantastic. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Thanks for hanging in there for the discriminant. It's kind of like this little like specific thing that I don't really feel is that important uh, in math, but it is a thing. It's a question that they're going to ask in your quadratics unit. Faux show, so be ready for that. But it is the little guy or the part that's inside the square root, inside the radical of the quadratic formula, b squared minus 4ac. All right, that's it. Have a wonderful day and stay awesome.